In this video, we're going to take a big picture look at the background and the content of the book of Acts. Stay tuned. Hey guys, Brian here. Welcome back to the channel. Do me a favor, hit that subscribe button and make sure you click on that little bell icon to be notified every time we release a new video for you. One of the most important things that you can do to better understand the Word of God is to understand a little bit about the background of what book it is that you're reading. Today, as we look at the background of the book of Acts, there are four things we're going to be talking about. Number one, the title and content. The book of Acts, like every book in the Bible, originally didn't have a title. By the end of the second century, it had been referred to as Acts in a document referred to as the Anti-Marcionite Prologue. Also significant to know is around the end of the second century, the church father Irenaeus started calling it the Acts of the Apostles. Now, the Acts of the Apostles is probably what the title page of your Bible has whenever you get to the book of Acts, but it is so much more than just the Acts of the Apostles. This is really an account of the Acts of the Holy Spirit working through the early Christians and the early church. The book of Acts shows the continuing work of Jesus by way of the Holy Spirit amongst his people and the mission of God to take the gospel into all the earth. The book of Acts actually has a theme verse, Acts chapter 1, verse 8, which says, But you will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and to the end of the earth. That theme verse actually covers the entire overview of the book of Acts. We see in Acts chapter 1 through 7, the gospel primarily stays in Jerusalem. This is where the ministry of the early church takes off and the church is born. Then we see in the next few chapters, chapters 8 through 12, that the gospel and the mission of God extends beyond the walls of Jerusalem into Judea and Samaria. And finally, we follow the missionary journeys of Paul the Apostle as he takes the gospel into the entire known world or the ends of the earth, as Acts 1.8 would say. And we follow that from chapters 13 through the end in Acts chapter 28. Number two, we're looking at genre, authorship, and date of the book of Acts. Now, genre is just a fancy way of saying type, as in what type of literature is the book of Acts? Well, the book of Acts really falls into several different categories of literature. It's a narrative. There are a lot of stories that we find. There are also sermons that are recorded and training and teachings that are recorded. It not only tells the narrative story and the history of the church, but it also has something to say theologically as well. The book of Acts could be considered theological history or history with a theology. So it's more than just reading about facts of things that happen. It's actually reading how God was at work in those facts and the things that happen. Now that's the genre of the book of Acts. Let's move on to look at its authorship. The book of Acts appears to have been written by Luke, the beloved physician. Luke was actually a Gentile and he was a doctor that traveled with Paul the Apostle, one of the main characters from the book of Acts. We see on several different occasions that Luke actually records pronouns as shifting from they and them to we. There are several we passages throughout the book of Acts that help show that the writer of the book of Acts, Luke, not only wrote what he had learned or heard about, but was actually a first-hand witness to many of the things that he records. So now that we've looked at the genre and the authorship, let's look at the dating of the book of Acts. Essentially, scholars offer three different options when it comes to the dating of the book of Acts. There's an early, a middle, late, and then a late date. The early date is sometime before AD 64. And the reason that scholars hold to that particular view is because nowhere in the book of Acts does Luke record the death of Paul the Apostle, which happened approximately AD 64. And you would think that a character as prominent as Paul was, that his death would have been recorded had the book been written after that took place. 
Also, there are no references to the destruction of the temple in Jerusalem that took place in 70 AD as well. And you would assume that a book that is so focused on the history of the early church and the transition of the early church moving out of the temple Judaism area, but into its own distinct movement, that the destruction of the temple would have been recorded as well. So that's why most evangelical scholars propose the early date. Now, the second date that many people propose, I said was a late middle or a middle late, and that is sometime between 70 and 90. The reason people choose that date is an assumption that Luke's gospel knows about the fall of Jerusalem in AD 70, and then that assumption is read into the dating of the book of Acts. The third date that people postulate is a date between AD 95 and 100, and this assumes that Luke got most of his source material from Josephus, the ancient writer. It seems to me, after weighing all of the evidence and all of the views, that an early dating for the writing of the book of Acts is the most favored and the most likely of dates. We've looked at the title and content. We've looked at genre, authorship, and dating. Now we're going to move on to number three. You ready? With number three, we're looking at Luke as a theologian. One of the interesting things about Luke as a theologian is noticing the material that he chose to put in this chronicle of the life of the early church. The book of Acts covers a period of roughly 30 years approximate, and over the course of that 30 years, Luke actually handpicks certain stories in order to tell a theological picture of what God was doing in the known world at that time. So Luke brings many things to the table as a theologian. As a matter of fact, one of those things Luke brings to the table is the importance of mission. He shows that God is constantly on mission. Luke shows that the mission of God and the movement of the early church is not a movement or a mission that's confined to one group of people in one location, but rather the mission and the gospel of Jesus goes throughout the entire known world at the time. And everybody is welcome at the table of Jesus. Luke also shows us the beautiful interaction that the Holy Spirit has with believers. We see constantly throughout the book of Acts the power of the Holy Spirit, not just on Jewish people, but on Gentiles as well. We see the activation of spiritual gifts. We see the empowerment for witness. We see the leading and the wisdom that the Holy Spirit gives to those that are followers of Christ. And if it weren't for Luke as a theologian, the church would be missing a beautiful picture of the pneumatology or the doctrine of the Holy Spirit that we so valuably receive from Luke in the book of Acts. Now for number four, an overview of the book of Acts. When you look at the overview of the book of Acts, you can break it down into a handful of sections. The first section that we look at is the establishment of the church. We see those earliest believers of Jesus, those earliest apostles and crowd, gathered together, praying, seeking, waiting on the promise of the Father. Then the Holy Spirit shows up and electrifies them, and that is when the church is established. We see that primarily works in the next phase, the ministry in Jerusalem. Jerusalem was the capital of the Jewish empire. Jerusalem is where the temple was, and Jerusalem is where God's mission, the church, began. And we see that throughout several chapters in the book of Acts. The next thing is we see the ministry in Judea and Samaria. There were some interesting things that were taking place in Judea and Samaria. And as the gospel began to spread, we see the ethnicities beginning to spread as well. As we continue going through the book of Acts, we see a new center of power and authority emerge. Where before the church began in Jerusalem, and Jerusalem was kind of a power base or a home base, Antioch becomes a new power base where Paul the Apostle and many others are sent on the mission of God. Then, moving out of Antioch, we see another power base rising up, and that is Ephesus. Paul the Apostle actually stays in Ephesus for a while, and that becomes a new power center for the church as well. And the final section of the book of Acts records Paul's journey as he goes to Rome, where essentially the gospel has finally made it to the ends of the earth. Interestingly enough, the book of Acts is the one book in the entire Bible, Old Testament and New, that doesn't have a formal conclusion. 
Many people believe the reason that it doesn't have a formal conclusion is because God's trying to show us that the New Testament church is still alive and well today. And you and me are a part of that church and we're still making moves on God's mission. This was part one in a new series that we're going through on the book of Acts. Make sure that you subscribe and hit that bell icon so you can be notified every time we release new videos as we go through the book of Acts to help you understand the God of the word, by getting deeper into the Word of God. Thanks for watching, guys. I'm Brian. We'll see you next time.